from Diaz. Oh, it's a terrific finish! What a finish by Wilfred Zaha! Leeds United have the lead against Chelsea! Trippier goes for it! And how? Well, this is why they are champions. Jason Sancho, still Sancho. Cool as you like. Liverpool 9. This is a statement victory at Anfield. Ruben That's just what he does. Alessandro Maxima with his first goal of the season. Another landmark for Harry Kane. 200 in his league career. So many chances this game. It was ridiculous how we won the game, to be honest. Clark. For Cole. Wants it back, gets it back. And he's in here. Tim Flowers shows why he's rated so highly. Tim Flowers had a world Good goalkeeper, wasn't he? Ah, uh, very top, good goalkeeper. Top goalkeeper. Great character to have yeah. in the change room as well. Brilliant lad. Yeah. There's a good Newcastle team match at this time. Oh, they were flying. Yeah, played great they football. They played some serious stuff. Here you go, look, there's another one. Here's Cole. And he's gone for placement. I used to love playing against them. Well, they give you a chance, didn't they? Because they just, they just didn't bother marking you. No. It was great no. for me. Newcastle under Kevin Keegan, do you think they should have won the Premier League title? I felt a little bit sorry for them because I think if they'd been a little bit more savvy, yeah. they really should have won that, that yeah. title that year. I mean, they were fantastic to watch. And Kevin was a big character, yeah. you know, gave, gave good interviews, was passionate yeah. in his interviews, and I think a lot of people liked that. Um, and because there was always goals in their games, you yeah. know, people did like them. But football's not just about sticking the ball in the back of the net you've no. also got to do the, the horrible stuff that yeah. your team were quite good at you, you, you actually in your career at Southampton never, were never relegated no. um, into the championship but there were four or five times where you entered into the last game of the season yeah. how did that feel having to sort of deal with that on quite a few occasions um, there, there was obviously it was a, a nervous time because you, as much as you you feel confident in your own ability to go out and win a football match um, you know, you've also you, you've got players around you. You know, any one mistake uh, at any given time, you know, and you could you could get relegated. So it was it was quite nerve wracking. But in a strange way, I really look forward to those days as well because it was a real good chance to be the hero. Well, Southampton standing. Talk us through that. So I used to put myself in and about Ian when he was flicking and. and you were never quite sure where the ball was going to be going, so you were ready for anything. <laughs> so when it when it come back behind me, uh, I wasn't overly surprised. It was a lovely little flick there. I mean, for a number of seasons, you were doing your own goal of the season competition. <laughs> <laughs> One pass Wilson, two pass Scott, and how's that for a lovely piece of composure? Why was he leaving you out? Well, it's a question I ask myself, to be honest, guys. <laughs> I was top scorer as well, with two at that point <laughs> in the season. <laughs> so when I scored that goal, the blonde lad, yeah. he'd been the one that put him playing in my place. Right. He was warming up. He was yeah. warming up. So Moods was uh, warming up, ready to come on. To. And I think when I scored that first goal, the camera panned back to the, the dugout, and I can re literally Ian Bramford going, Moods, sit down. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that was me. I was coming off then. A gap in our back four there, guys, was it? <laughs> well, who's that stepped out? Is it who's, who's set her half, eh? Steve Wood. Steve Wood, he stepped out, hasn't he? Yeah. It's Southampton 1, Newcastle United 1. Cole now with 27 goals in Newcastle colours. It might be another here. As soon as they equalised, we were like, oh, we can't get out of our half here. Honestly, it was like the, it was like the Alamo. Newcastle sweeping forward again with Lee and inevitably Cole had a panicky clearance but an effective one by Finale. He was tough on it. Yes. He was tough. Incredibly tough, yeah. He did not want to be playing against him. No. Five minutes to go. Wow. I didn't have the energy to celebrate that, there, look. Is that lack of energy to celebrate? <laughs> or was it, a case, was it a case of do one manager? Was it one of those? It, That's what I can do. Uh, it, it was a little bit because he's smiling like can't believe you dropped me what's yeah good? he's smiling like I know what's coming after the game how could you drop him yeah <laughs> well single handedly Letitia has done Newcastle 
He's given Southampton something that they obviously haven't had in his absence. Southampton have their second win of the season and it's one in the eye for the critics of Ian Brantford. The manager big enough to bring back today the prodigal son of Southampton, Matthew Letitia. Well, Ian obviously eventually left and Alan Ball came in in 1994. Yeah. How important was that for you? That was a, a, a massive turning point in my career um, because I'd kind of stagnated a little bit for a couple of years. So when Alan Ball came in, for me, it was just like a breath of fresh air because here was a man who kind of done everything in the game, you know, a World Cup winner. Um, and he turned up and just kind of made me feel a million dollars right from right from day one. He was like, "This is this is your best player. We're going to build the team around him. Every time you get the ball, I want you to look to pass the Matt here because he's your best chance of getting out of the trouble that we're in. Mm. We were bottom of the league at the time. Um, and me as a as a player, I just went, "Oh my god, mm. this is a bloke who's won the World Cup and he thinks I'm a yeah. decent player." And that. The result of that was for the next 18 months was just the most incredible period of my career. Yeah. And that's when you scored, I think, I, I can't remember how many goals it will be, you probably remember. I, I can tell you how many goals it was. <laughs> yeah. so, Alan, was so, Borley was in charge of Southampton, only 18 months, so he was in charge for 66 games. Yeah. And I missed one of them through injury and one through suspension. Right. And in those 64 games, I scored 45 goals. From me, as a, as a personal point of view, that, yeah. that 18 months, where I had a bloke who'd won the World Cup who believed I was a, I was a really good player. Yeah. It was just brilliant for me. Yeah. We've just seen you score two screamers, but before we go into the second game, let's have a look at these. Yeah, free kick against Wimbledon. Oh, it was a cheeky one. Yeah, that was quite nice. That, that, was, a, that was a funny game. I've been man-marked the whole game. Couldn't get a kick of the ball. And then we got that free kick about 10 minutes in the end of the game. And I smashed it in the top corner with one nil. And I never ever tried it again in my career. That was the only time I did it. I completely forgot. Yeah, I you forgot just about completely it. Forgot about it. <laughs> so every time we got a free kick, I just wanted to like curl it over the wall or something. And I'd forgot about that free kick and never did it again. This game is Aston Villa, very early on in the season. I think it was first or second game of the season, and that's in the uh, 89th minute. And we're losing one nil. Um, Jeff Kenner had been brilliant that night. Uh, and he'd been flying down the right wing all the time and, I, and I'd said to him at half time, I said, when you're flying down that right wing, I'm just going to try and follow you. Whenever you get in trouble, just square it and I'll be there for you. Right. And this is in the 89th minute and he did that. He's, he re kind of ran up a, a bit of an alley and he just exactly where I wanted it and second touch wasn't bad either. I mean, when we were playing against you, going back to that goal, whoever was nearest to you within 25, 30 yards from what had to go to you, there's no way that you could ever get that amount of space. I mean, yeah. just, you were in big trouble. During yeah, during that, that period, it was about a two or three year period where I was playing with a lot of confidence and got myself in that position quite yeah. a lot. And if I had a free shot from 25 yeah. yards, I fancied myself. Yeah. So this was my favourite one of my career. This is the Blackburn. Oh, Blackburn fans there, aren't you? Yeah, that, that, I got a huge round of applause from the Blackburn fans. And then, you know, that, that kind of tells you you've done something pretty special when the home team's fans start clapping you. It, was it made better because Tim Flowers ended up in a really terrible position on his backside? <laughs> <laughs> it did a little bit, yeah, because when, when he left Southampton, he always said to me, you'll never score past me. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, that was that little look that, I was, that he left me with at the end there. That was me trying to just catch his eye just to go, all right. <laughs> so I started hitting straight at Oggy in goal, and yeah. about halfway through its flight, it just starts taking the bend. And it's just, and he's just wrong foot. More and power on that one, more laces than the other one. The other one seemed to be more. Was it same? Is it same technique? Yeah, almost. Yeah. So there was, there was well spotted actually. Not a lot of people noticed that. It's uh, not so, flat, so, the, so the first two were, were more side foot. Yeah. That one was kind of driven a little bit yeah. more with the with the laces a little bit, but still with a little bit of yeah. side foot in it, but but not as much as the other two. Very mm. perceptive of you guys. I'm <laughs> impressed. Yeah. And this is the last ever goal at the Dell. Two minutes to go, 2-2 two, two against Arsenal, and uh, I'd come on a sub. Hello. But it's uh, it's a pretty decent finish with me uh, with me poor foot from uh, behind me, uh, and that was just an amazing feeling. Yeah. I actually, <laughs> I mean, I, I I just felt it was like my destiny to score the last goal at the Dell. Yeah, I'd had a lot of injuries, yeah. um, so I'd been out for about probably about five or six weeks. Right. Um, 
and on the Tuesday before the game, uh, Stuart Gray was manager at the time, um, and I kind of just got back to where I was back training with the lads, and I hadn't really played any reserve matches yeah. or anything. And he said to me on the Tuesday, he said, look, he said, I know you're not really in any great shape, he said, but for what you've done for this football club, he said that game on, uh, on the weekend, he said, I'm putting you on the bench, yeah. and I promise you, when the final whistle goes, you'll be on the pitch because right. you deserve to be. Yeah. And from that minute, on that on the Tuesday, every night I went to bed thinking about scoring the last goal at the deal. That's all that was yeah. going through my mind. Do you know something? I used to have thoughts like that as well, but it never came true. Start okay, and tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you tried to... The Dell. It was a shocker for us, that ground, for about two, three, four years. Mm -hmm. It was an absolute shocker. Really. It'd be more difficult to play in sort of such a tight pitch, but did you feel you know, must have felt comfortable on there? Yeah, but I also enjoyed I enjoyed tight pitches. I didn't like big spaces. Because I wasn't quick, I needed tight spaces to be able to entice people in to, to try yeah. and get the ball off me so I can use my feet yeah. and get away from people in tight areas as opposed to having space to run into. I was it down there, every time the ball came to me, maybe, maybe it was just me. <laughs> there was no, no there was time. No time. <laughs> Manchester United having conceded five last Sunday. Southampton trying to get at them early. You can't blame them for that as a quick throw by Letitia. And uh, it have to be retaken. Roy Keane went in in a way that has upset the referee, Jeff Winter. And it, it's an early booking for the United midfield man. Been beaten 5-0 the week before against Newcastle. Yeah. Did that give you confidence going into that game? Uh, I think so. Um, knowing that, uh, that it was possible and that, you know, weren't... Uh, a team that, that couldn't be got at. Um, I kind of tended to raise our game against the biggest signs that came down for the Dell. Ostenstadt. Berkovic. Ostenstadt's in here, parried by Schmeichel. Berkovic! His first goal for Southampton in the sixth minute. And Manchester United's defensive problems continue from the northeast down here on the south coast. You enjoy playing with him? Good footballer, he yeah. was a good footballer. Um, one of the best passes of a ball I played with. Yeah. Uh, he made me look like a good tackler, <laughs> to be honest. Wasn't the bravest lad in the world, but he could play. Yeah. He could play. That's a foul by Keane, who's already been booked. They're well done, Ref. <laughs> it's a second yellow for Keane, who is sent off. For the fourth time in his Manchester United career. And that's not even the young guy. No. Barely is. I mean, I have to say that that referee... That was harsh. That was poor officiating. Yeah. And Southampton in a great position here, you feel, even though it's early in the piece, to continue their recent improvement. Letizia. Oh, how's he done that? Matt Letizia digs into his manual of masterpieces again. It looped over Schmeichel, and it's 2-0 Southampton. Oh dear. You see what I'm talking about, about liking the confined spaces? Yeah. So with people on top of me, I can kind of weave, and I don't have to be quick to do that. Just have to have decent feet. We actually, Peter got chipped by Philippe Albert. And that's exactly what was going through my mind. Yeah. Because I watched it, it was the, uh, the, the football on the Monday before, yeah. before that game. And I remember Philippe doing it. Because if you watch that goal back, I actually don't look up at all when I'm in the run. Yeah. I'm just guessing that he's off his line. Yeah. This was a good free kick. Cantona leaves it to Beckham, and that's why the 10 men get a goal back by the number 10. Oh. So there's someone on the touchline, yeah. there's someone on the there's line as well. The line, you it into the net, man. <laughs> But that's how that's how good Bex was because normally people teams would go, oh, let's put just put a man back on the yeah. post. You can't score. He still did. It was incredible. It was the best free kick taker I saw. Do you know what? I never forget the first squad that Glenn Hoddle picked. Uh, you were in it as well when we when we went to Moldova. I can remember training at, uh, at Bisham Abbey, I think it was, yeah. and doing a session after one of the, the the training sessions where me, Glenn, and, and Bex were taking free kicks on the edge of the box. They had like a mannequin wall set up. And, uh, and it just destroyed my confidence a little bit when it came to free kick taking, really, because I'm watching Bex whip these balls over the wall and just thinking, jeez, the pace he's getting on them and the dip he's getting on them. 
and I thought, I thought I was quite good. <laughs> that was actually the trip where the Say You'll Be There Spice Girls song came on. And he said, oh, really? I like her. And it was Victoria, and she came to a game about two weeks later, and obviously wow. the rest is history. So it was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely story. Fantastic. Heartwarming. <laughs> I remember doing a session with him. Is that him. Touch, by the way? Did you? Is that you? Yeah, that was me. What the first touch that Sorry, I was cut across you. <laughs> there you go, that's more like it. There we go, there we go. <laughs> what are you doing now in the channel? <laughs> Southampton stung into what they hope will be the right kind of uh, retaliation here. Erstenstadt. Maisie's feet were a bit yeah. poor there, to be honest. To be fair, Peter as well getting beat at the near post. Well, it's not like him, is it? No, it was it was just a messy, horrible place for us to play. Just things happened that usually you're in control of the game away from home. I never felt in control at the Dell. I always felt like things could happen. Beckham. It's a challenging cross too. Oh, Jordi Cruyff. Yeah. Jordi Cruyff. Are you a fan of that kit, yes? No. Beckham with the wider angle this time clips it up. And David May comes in. Well, it's turning out to be an extraordinary game here at the Dell. Maisie swimming. Maisie, like right yeah. most. We were kind of still nervous at that point. Yeah. When you put it back to 3 2, sure, I can remember thinking, surely we're going to throw this away against <laughs> 10 men. <laughs> deep corner Bakovic that's a volley that's a wonderful goal he is showing off his talents here that's decent Just technique I don't even remember that you know do you not no I remember yours the one the chip yeah it's like time stood still that that's good technique wow the game just went a bit mental in the last 10 yeah. minutes that's a good oh. pass Erster's that it's another one, his second, and surely that puts Manchester United out of reach. That was just a mess. Every time we played down there, it was a mess. So the grass is long, you don't want. It felt like Southampton lost something when they moved from the Dell in terms of that sort of yeah. that atmosphere, that closeness. Would you think that as well? Is that the reason ultimately you think you got relegated? Uh, I think it was probably a, a small part of it. Um, I wanted to be a professional footballer and I wanted to play for England. Those were the two things I wanted more than anything in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and I was able to do both of those at, at Southampton. So um, when people kind of say, you know, why didn't you move on? As long as I was playing in the in the top flight, yeah. I didn't really mind. I liked the challenge of playing against you boys. Yeah. You know, I, I preferred the role of the underdog as opposed to being the favourite all the time. Yeah. And it's just kind of part of my character, really. No regrets? None whatsoever. No? None whatsoever. I, I got uh, about what, five or six years ago, um, they, did a, they did a vote. I think it was the 125th anniversary of Southampton. Any medals, as I would have liked. Um, but that accolade, I think, kind of yeah. makes, me, makes me more proud than anything. Matt, great. Cheers, guys. Good to see you too, mate. Thank you.